Okay, so the title of the sermon today is No Other Doctrine. Now, let us pray. Lord God, thank you for bringing us here today. I pray that the Holy Spirit come down through this service and through those people that are listening. Lord, bless every single one of us here and give us understanding of your word. In the name of the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. So no other doctrine. Now what happens is, Paul's writing a letter to Timothy. And he's saying to them, I charge, charge these people. Go and tell these people, command these people. Okay. I abide, abide still at Ephesus. So something's happening in Ephesus. Okay. When I went into Macedonia, that I might is charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Go and tell people not to teach any other doctrine. So what's happening? Immediately we've got the word of God, an amazing gift to us. Straight away people are using it, changing it, adding, removing. Now we know the uh, the penalties in the Bible for adding to the word of God. We know what it is. God will add the plagues unto you. The last words in the Bible are don't mess with the Bible, basically. In a nutshell, okay? Now, is this going to stop people? No. It's the same as when you go to court. They said, you swear on this Bible. Well, firstly, it's wrong to swear. Jesus says, don't do it. (laughs) So he's giving you a book, (laughs) telling you not to swear and telling you to swear on it. Okay, so we don't do that. But we see that here. If you're a liar and a cheat and you go to court, swearing on the Bible isn't, I mean, it's a sin that you don't care about. If you just murdered someone, you know, you don't care. So we've got that now. People will add to the doctrine. Okay? They will remove from the doctrine. Now, I've added this for last week to clarify. Because some people say I condemn all rich people. No. I do not condemn all rich people. Just to clarify, this is what I said, okay? Charge them that are rich, okay? Tell the people, command the people that are rich, okay? That they don't be high-minded. Now, everybody here knows what this means. Sometimes people get a little bit of money. Sometimes you people are working over here for Greek people, you know, or, or, or some people that have got a lot of money. Maybe they're Russian people, maybe they're Jewish people, whatever. And they become high-minded. Okay, so we were in this church. We definitely understand this version, this uh, verse. Okay, not to trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who gives us richly all things to enjoy. So, if you're a rich person, for example, God's given you that. It's not yours. God's allowed you to have that. Okay, so charge them. Okay, that they remember that. Also, to put trust in this world. For example, you're rich. Maybe you should help that person. I did that. Somebody was, uh, what shall I spend this money on? You know, I had a lot of money. I'll buy a new, I said, give it to poor people. Everyone was shocked. Everyone was giving this person advice what to do with this massive amount of money. I said, give it to poor people. Everyone kept quiet. Okay. That they do good, that they be rich in good works. Not buy another, someone said the guy had 180, whatever. Okay. Yeah, but that guy helps his people, you said. So to be honest, I don't really mind. If he's helping his people and he's helping poor people, then I don't care how many roles. There's no poor people in this country. Then I've got nothing to say about that person. I will judge someone who rules righteously, okay? Okay. But not everyone's like that, okay? So be rich in good works. Remind people, charge uh, rich people about that. Ready to distribute, okay? Your employer's rich, give it to poor people sometimes. Why don't you help that person out? You've got all this money. It's not rude to say, it's the word of God. Maybe you put it better than me, more charming than me. Do that, okay? Okay, willing to communicate, okay? Talk to people. 
sometimes people won't speak to, you know, those people don't have enough money. Well, you know, you're no different to them. Okay, so lay up in store for themselves a good foundation. Okay, don't build a better, bigger house. Store up treasure in heaven against the time to come. You're not going to live forever, Mr. Rich person. Now, don't forget, I'm not against all rich people. Okay, talking about a sample. Okay, so that they may lay hold on eternal life. Okay, so that's what I meant by last week. I just want to get that clear now. Now, back to the sermon. Okay, keeping the sound doctrine of God. Okay. Now we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Now what do I mean by this? The word of God is amazing. Okay. But we have to use it lawfully. Does someone sin? Yes. What do we do if that person sins? Do we punish them ourselves? Do we make their lives miserable? Do we gang up on that person? Do we tell that person that they're wrong and what they're doing is wrong? You see, there's different ways. Use it lawfully. Okay? If someone, I was with someone, I, 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 I must have been very, very young. Now, she says to me, go and beat up that man. He's stealing groceries. Now, yes, I was in security, but this man was stealing food. What does that tell you? He's not a bank robber. He's not mugging anyone. He was stealing food because he was hungry. What should I do? Should I run to the police and tell them that man took a can of beans? Arrest him? Or do I use it lawfully? Do you remember what the, the preaching last week on the greater good? What's the greater good here? Yes, stealing is wrong. But if that man's hungry, what do we do? If I caught someone stealing from the church, what were they stealing? Food? I'd give it to them. Use the law lawfully. Okay? The law's good if you use it lawfully. Okay? So make a righteous judgment as Christians. Okay, morning, my brother. Okay, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, the profane, for murderers of fathers, murderers of mothers, for manslayers. What's he saying here? Well, let me let me let me tell you something. You didn't need the Bible to tell you that murder's wrong. You don't need. You didn't need that. You knew it was wrong. Do you know why he wrote it? So that there could be judgment against these people. The laws we have today are based on the biblical rules. Thou shalt not murder. Don't steal. You don't need a book to tell you it's wrong to steal. You knew. But we need the book as a judgment. Where does it say it's wrong? Here in the book. So we need that. Okay, so if the law is not made for a righteous man, because people figure it out. Some people naturally do the right thing. Okay, but well, we've got it there. Okay, for homemongers, for men, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, people that kidnap people and sell them, because they needed a book to tell them that that was wrong. But God did it anyway. Okay, He told them. I felt compelled to tell the church today, because we've got a lot of single girls here maybe, I need to explain something, okay? There's a different type of men stealer. Now, because I come from a sinful life, I'll tell you about this. There are people out there that are going to want to take someone you meet away from you, okay? Now, this isn't the one mentioned here in the Bible, but I'm just telling you. There are people out there that want to take what you have just to take, just for fun. When you meet someone, this, these people will flirt with that person to get them away from you. Not because they want that person, but just for fun, just because they take pleasure in evil. Beware of these people. 
It's not the meaning here in the Bible, but I, I, I read it and I thought I wanted to share that with the church. Okay, So for perjured persons, um, I mean, at, at the moment, I'm, uh, there's somebody who's told the police a load of lies about me to try and put me away. He perjured himself. Two people have actually done this to me. They perjured themselves to get me into trouble. Okay, These people are going to burn in hell. And if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Yeah, yeah. sound doctrine. Okay, so anything that goes against the Bible, sound doctrine, we ignore it, okay? We ignore it. Now, <laughs> I don't know how many of you have seen that film. Uh, he quotes, uh, and it's become super famous, Ezekiel 25, 17. What's that film? Uh, Pulp Fiction. He quotes this part, okay? And it, it's taken from the wrong Bible version, so it doesn't make sense. But this is where, what it's about. So do you know, it's not supposed to be you're pointing a gun to someone to steal their hamburger or whatever it is he's doing there, okay? This is the actual reason. And I'm telling you this today in church because when God delivers your enemies to you, you're going to need to remember what I said today. Okay? Thus said the Lord, because the Philistines have dealt by revenge. You see, can anybody here tell me the difference between justice and revenge? Please. Loud. <laughs> Go on. I can't hear you, brother. Speak. Yeah. Yes, that's right. It does. Yes. That's correct as well. That's better than how I was going to say it. <laughs> Maybe you're preaching church one day, brother. Okay. So, he's correct. Okay. It's a personal thing. I want to punish this person and take revenge on them. Or is it justice what I want? When evil people suffer, that's justice from God. But what the Philistines did here, they overdid it. They overdid it. They took revenge on Israel, but they went mental doing it. They, they slaughtered and slaughtered for no reason. There was no need for it. So Jesus said, I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. When God brings your enemy to you, don't go over the top with your punishment. Okay? Don't do that. Have justice, yes, but don't go over the top. Okay? If I say sorry to Raya, if I say sorry to you, don't say, right, if you're really sorry, you'll hit yourself with a baseball bat 50 times. No. <laughs> don't go over the top with, um, you know, with making someone suffer. Don't do that. You don't need to. Okay? Go to the next one. Please. Okay. You don't need to write this one down, but he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You'll see how this comes into the service the next line after this. Okay. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf shall also not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Does it say it will prosper now, right now? Lord, I prayed for a wife. I prayed for a husband. And I'm waiting right now. I'm going to sit by the doorway and wait till it happens. You know, and you've instantly prayed. So, you know, there's a man waiting for you at the door with a rose in his teeth, Bible in his hand, good Christian man. No, it doesn't work like that. Okay, in his season, at the right time, you'll meet that person. Let's not be impatient. In season. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Now we focus on the original message. Okay? The sound doctrine to keep. Okay? No other doctrine. 
I will set up shepherds over them which shall feed them. God's predicting what will happen in the future, a different type of shepherd. That doesn't make, you, see, you shouldn't be terrified of your pastor, of your leader, supposed to be a leader. He's supposed to be your servant. He doesn't rule over you. Okay. Now, they will fear no more. You see, these people in these days, they terrified the people. They were terrified of the scribes. They were terrified of the Pharisees. Terrified. They will fear no more, nor be dismayed. Neither shall they be lacking, saith the Lord. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. I will raise unto David. Who's he talking about here? A righteous branch. A king shall reign and prosper. And shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In the whole earth. Now we know who he's talking about here. Okay, no guesses needed. In his days Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. In And this in his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Now the sound doctrine handed down by Jesus. Go to the next one please. Okay. Now comes the punishment for those that change the rules okay that twisted the word of god okay that spoke another doctrine this is thy lot this is the people that listen to the false doctrine a punishment for the people that listen to it this is thy lot this is what you wanted the portion of your measures from me said the lord because you've forgotten me and trusted in falsehood now I'm knocking on this thing now. How many people have you heard? I hope you'll be all right. Knock on wood. What's knocking on wood going to do for you? Nothing. You trusted in falsehood. I crossed my fingers. That's falsehood. It's okay because I pray to Saint Cecilia or whatever. That's trusting in falsehood. There's one way to go. Okay. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. In the church I found their wickedness. Morning, brother. In my church, in my house. God's saying, I found these people in my house, in my church. Because this isn't our church, brothers and sisters, it's God's, it's Jesus's. Okay? Wherefore their way shall be unto them slippery ways in the darkness, and shall be driven on, and fall therein. Their ways will wrap around them and choke them. Okay? I will bring evil upon them in the year of their visitation, when I visit them. Because God loves judgment, remember? And he will visit them. Okay? You keep doing it. I didn't realize you were doing it without asking. Okay. I've also seen in the prophets of Jerusalem a horrible thing. What horrible thing did he see? They commit adultery and walk in lies. They strengthen the hands of evildoers. And none doth, none doth return from his wickedness. What's the point of the word of God? is to get people away from sin, to save them, bring them back to God. Okay, this is the point. Now, if you don't open your mouth, if you don't say anything, they don't turn from their sins. Why should they? You've told them God loves you. Now, I've had someone say to me recently, Mario, stop saying all this anti-gay stuff. Stop saying people, you'd get more people in your church. Sell out, basically. Say a popular doctrine. No, thank you. I fear God too much for that. <laughs> I fear his punishment worse than yours. Okay, no. I'm not going to say well, like these other people do. Okay, anyway. They are all of, of them un, unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants thereof as Gomorrah. Okay. This is what they're like to me. 
this is what they're like to me, this is what they're worth to me. Now, if they were the lowest, that low, and God sees them as Sodom and Gomorrah, then these people have sunk pretty low. Okay, that said the Lord of hosts, hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy among you. They make you vain. They make you believe in yourselves instead of God. Okay. I had last week, I had people bibbing up and down to try and stop the church there. I know Satan was behind it. It didn't work. Okay. Well, they're strengthening the hands of the evildoers. Because if someone's doing evil and you're going to go, Jesus loves you. He loves you if you're gay. He loves you. No, no, no. Stop saying that. <laughs> you're not going to get these people to repent, which is the whole point. Okay. Now, so don't listen. A command. Do not listen to the words of the prophets that prophesy among you. I've had a very special vision. God told me to, you know, run down the beach and do a handstand and stuff like this. No. Don't listen. It's a command to people. Do not listen to these people. They make you vain. They make you believe something that isn't real. They make you believe in yourself. I, me. Okay? They speak a vision of their own heart. And not out of the mouth of the Lord. I've heard many people say, God sent me to do this. God told me to do that. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. I know because I know the Bible. And what you're saying, you're preaching. You are preaching.